Sub Shredders, my name is Logan aka Spiderhands, and welcome to SP Reviews where today we're going to be checking out a track from an act named Slimy Darrow, titled Misunderstood. And if we switch over to here, we have the track on the screen on YouTube, where you're going to be listening through this track from start to finish. We're going to hear what you think. Let's go. What are we in for today? This is the first uh, time I've listened to this artist, so this should be good. Cooking up. Great Peter's on there, nice and subtle. Misunderstood, misunderstood, uh, misunderstood. misunderstood. Not taking S cause I come from the hood. She got scoliosis, I gave her that good good. Misunderstood, misunderstood, uh, misunderstood. misunderstood. Not taking S cause I come from the hood. She got scoliosis, I gave her that good good. Okay, dope intro here with the synths. That really nice resonant sub bass there. That is still quite nicely balanced in the mix, the drums as well. Great painting with those vocals as well. I like the creativity we're using with the different sides of the repeaters and everything like that. It's cool. On that hole like a bouncer. Yeah. She gave me brand shit counselor. Yeah. Sour patches, no flowers. Yeah. Eating you niggas like cowards. Niggas talking, they ain't using their lips. Caught in those last night, you all in the mix. Changing your clothes like you got on some drip. You was biting the style, you son of a bitch. Rex kid, you a feeling. I'm feeling a whole cake. Stupid bitch. Pulling racks out my pockets. I make a whole thing. Rats. Never argue with a bitch in my life. Don't care what a hoe say. Never. Niggas wanna get smoke out of day. I'm translating, you could die overnight. Yeah. Tropic Thunder, I'm trying to be nice. You and I see no surviving that fight. All right. Okay. Uh, interesting effect on the, on the vocals. I, I think there's like a modulation of sorts, like a like a tuning device or something like that. Um, you know, it's a dead contemporary sort of hip-hop vibe, but I dig it. Interesting flow to it, messing around with different rhythms. Shit is impeccable. All of these niggas do testing. Nothing like them's get sexual. I'm in a stew like a vegetable. Find me a way to know mine. Cause I don't like the traffic. Yeah. You bitches got whiskers and hairs. I think that you catfish. You think you're you got whisp whiskers and hairs, I think, that you catfish. The, the wordplay is nice. The wordplay is great. I like the call and responses and a little bits of extra vocal folly on the sides as well. They have occasionally, re you know, uh, responding back to it. It's a nice image um, that's being formed here. Stay in my pain. Well, that is not happening. I got a way to attest to my name. Don't think that I'm average. Misunderstood. Misunderstood. Uh, misunderstood. Not taking S because I come from the hood. She got scoliosis. I gave her that good good. Misunderstood. Uh, misunderstood. Not taking it's because I come from the hood. She got scoliosis. I gave you that good. Okay, we'll get that instrumental outro here. Great. That's a classy decision of a, f a fade out at the end of a tour and a bit in a track. That short form, but we came and went. And I kind of have to admire that. I kind of have to admire that a little bit because. You know, often you, you get people fading out primarily because they don't want to go into like the fifth minute of a track. But it's it's really, you know, respectful of the listener's time. Because this is the conclusion of my review of Slimy Doro is Misunderstood. Where, where do we begin? I think the story is about someone, you know, we, we hear about him not having arguments with people and, um, you know, not caring what people think. And um, like, like people like Whiskers and their appearance and stuff like that are maybe judging him unfairly, not even being so self-aware about themselves. Um, I'm trying to figure out what we're misunderstood about. I think primarily, I think it's because uh, Slime Adaro was talking about how people misunderstand his his um, intentions as a rapper and as a human being, you know? Maybe maybe he, he thinks that people sort of perceive him as caring too much about what they Thinking and, and, and when it's actually the opposite, he's not here to play I and mean, he's here to slay. Like you see, like the the um Herbert here, you know, you can see like the axes spinning around the Aldmar and something like that. I think that's kind of dope, you know. It was such a gentle vocal performance at times, um, with that head voice a lot of the time there with the melodic rapping that it was almost uh, impeccable in the sense that even if there was some really dark stuff going on, and there was a parts where there was a bit of a sense of humor. I could give with that cash pick, catfish comment. That was kind of kind of dope. And a few other bits as well. Um, I, I think that the the swagger and the bravado shown there, with the not caring what people think and stuff like that, it seems believable. But it's also not like he's trying to shove it down your throat. And I have respect for that. You know, kind of could seem a bit desperate if you try too hard to tell someone that you don't care about what they think. Structure of the track, you know, it's no himself as a as a vocalist. The the words came through clearly for the most part. There are a few that are different, but I think it's just part of the style. They kind of. 
not directly sort of uh, committing to like hard consonants or anything like that. It's very floaty kind of breathy performance. And most of the time it's a 12, you know, and the mixing of the vocals for the most part was, was great. There were some bits in the lower range which sound a little bit sort of more clear than like his verse and, and some of his chorus parts. But I think that's just the style that Slimy Doro is okay with. It's one we stuck through most of the time. It didn't seem like an accident. It's, I, I have respect for that, man. You do you, it's all good. Um, the structure of the song, you had like the instrumental intro with like the, the pads and then you had like a hook and then a verse and then a hook and we were done. And I mean like with, with a two and a half minute track, you don't really need more than that. I mean, if you've got a story to tell, but you don't want to overstay your welcome, especially again in the music industry where a lot of people are finding that the audience has a lesser attention span than usual. If, if you, you know, like this track was fairly consistent with its sort of nature and tonality and textures throughout. I think that maybe Slimy Darrow is just looking for people who are into this kind of music and is trying to say, look, I do this too, and I, you know, I'm worth someone giving a shot, and I, I have to appreciate that. Again, having an intro song or a first impressions in short form can be a, a cool way of getting people to sort of participate without having to overcommit. Parts of the track, the performance, I'm assuming most of this is sampled. Um, they sounded like sort of like sampled kits and beat machines and stuff, and... You, know, you had the synth pads and everything and you know the, the bass as well sound like one of those 808s it might have been like an like it might have been um an old school 808 but then there's there's so much you can do with instrumental so plugins and stuff like that nowadays and there's nothing wrong with that because they sound just as good arguably if not better because of the the increased level of uh flexibility you have with how they sound and adding different effects chains and stuff like that you know um technology's come a long way and that's the blessing and a curse is that I mean, I suppose the blessing part is that you have access to all these things that may not have been as easy accessible, you know, 20, 30 years ago. Um, but, but nowadays, you know, if you've got a, a few different toys, you're basically sorted for a wide variety of stuff. And I think that in saying that, the minimalist approach to this track with having a few different ingredients as part of the accompaniment in addition to the vocals was a smart idea. Obviously, the focal point was the vocals, you know, and that's fine. There wasn't a lot of change in the harmonies here. Um, you know, two or three notes to the bass line and, um, you know, some triads extensions there. Didn't have a lot of ornamentation of the various instruments and that's absolutely fine. I appreciate and respect the neutrality of the, of the, the accompaniment. I don't necessarily know if I'll remember it in the long term. I'm more likely to remember the story that was told than the accompaniment, but that's fine again because that was secondary to the tale that was being told. It's fine. It's within the bounds of the genre. It's totally fine. Um, the production, recording, mixing, and mastering, I liked a lot of it. I'm not sure if everything was balanced absolutely perfectly, but I could tell there was dynamic range to the performance, which I can appreciate. It was a little bit quieter than the stuff, the stuff I listen to nowadays, and I'm not entirely upset about that. I think that it can kind of be helpful for the listener to have a track that's a little bit quieter just so they don't get their eardrums arrested. <laughs> And, and saying that low, I'm, I'm wondering, it's more, it's less about the overall volume and maybe the, glow, the, 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 the glowing of the instruments and more about like the power of them. I still feel like there could have been a little bit more low end resonance within those vocals and maybe we put the EQ a little bit high on the, the high pass filter. Um, just they were very eerie and I'm just wondering if we couldn't have had a bit of that kind of, uh, you know, that kind of sound there. Like with some of the low, low vocal parts of the track, like, like in the verse sections and stuff like that. But that, that's just a subjective thing. Um, the stereo padding instruments was great, nice range there. The effects chains were fun. I mean, there was variety that the different vocal parts, you know, and they had different filtering, different effects chains added to them. We clearly knew what we were doing or wanting, where we were wanting to go with it. You, you know, the, the, the limiting compression was fine. Again, there was dynamic range, but it was also things were glued together to, to an extent. And I think that the notching of the different frequency parts of the frequency spectrum, especially how clean that low 808 was, 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 was great. It was just a really eerie kind of um, interesting post-production situation here. And I'm not totally against it. I think it was good. It was definitely great for a first impression because this is effectively my review of Slimy Darrow's Misunderstood misunderstood hopefully you enjoyed it if you did please do go check out slimy darrow's various social medias his youtube page and stay cool and stay safe and please remember to support your local musicians and artists at this point in time as either help more than ever with all the crazy stuff going on in the world and i will catch you in the next review spider hands out